I don't know if you guys can see it, but do you see my two guard dogs up there on the ridge? I'm pretty sure they're investigating something. And today's video is sponsored by my friends over at BetterHelp. I wonder what they could be up to. Toby dog, Abby dog, come! Here they come. Guarantee you that that's Abby dog in the foreground. And that's Toby dog taking his sweet time. Different dogs have different personalities. And that's one of the things that makes them so great. Hi, sweetie. How are you? Hi, good morning. What were you guys doing up there, huh? Oh, Toby dog's still coming. We got some overflying birds as well. Of course, we also have a Mr. Toby dog. Hey, buddy, where are you going? Oh, Toby's a creature of habit. He's like, you're going through the wrong gate there, guys. And look, when you're on Toby dog's farm, you do as Toby dog says. Good morning. Can we sit? Can we have good manners and sit? Sit. Good girl. Hi. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, Abby. Hi, pal. Good to see you, buddy boy. Oh, I love you very much. All right, let's go. Let's go. Inside, let's start our day. All right, it's time for some fresh water for the weird chickens. Hey, Captain Janeway. Good to see you out and about. What's going on here? Hey, Rosette. You dropping some eggs? I can also see that Rosie's settling well back into the egg loo house. Bet, are you sitting on some eggs again? She keeps trying to leave eggs right here. Bet, you're gonna try to make a nest go in the egg loo house. I don't understand what you're trying to do here, girl. If you were to ask me, I would say that Bet is the weirdest of the weird chickens. Like, she just takes weirdness to that whole new level. I still love you, Bet, but you're weird. All right, Abby, come on, Toby. Let's go visit the geese and the ducks. Come on, Abby. We're gonna greet your chickens this morning. Okay, you ready, Abby? Release the clucking. That's a good girl. Your chicken behavior continues to improve and I'm very impressed. All right, let's go. Good morning, Mr. Pablo Barncat. Good to see you, buddy. How are you doing this morning? Oh, you're gonna be sweet and tender to me? Aw, I'll be sweet and tender to you too, pal. Oh, wait, what's that? Why are you trying to chomp me now, kid? So a video commenter recently asked the question of how many geese can you have per acre? They have a small little homestead and they really like seeing what the geese do for the land and they really enjoy the personalities of geese. And so they were asking me like, how many geese can they have given that they actually only had like two acres of field? And because as you guys can see right here, like geese work as lawn mowers. So the idea that these geese could be set out in a field of two acres and keep it managed for a summer, that in and of itself is totally plausible. You know, it's actually my personal opinion that geese are the most sustainable form of pastured poultry you can raise. Unlike chickens, turkeys, ducks, guinea fowl, peacocks, like unlike any of those other birds, a mature goose can get most of its food and nutrition by just eating grass. And so even if you had just a small one or two acre homestead, you could definitely raise geese on your property. As long as there's grass, and as long as you're willing to provide them with fresh water, you can easily find a way to raise geese. I just think the three biggest things that you need to consider are, number one, how are you going to move them? You know, if you let your geese stay too long in one spot, they're gonna overgraze that area and eat all the grass down to the point where it kills the grass. And that right there is the thing you don't wanna do because if you don't have grass, you can't feed your geese. And if you can't feed your geese, you gotta buy grain. And so they are no longer not that sustainable. And so even if you were gonna keep them in like a one acre paddock, I would probably not let them have access to that one acre the entire time. I would probably break it up into either quarters or thirds. Let them have like one part for about two weeks, then another part for two weeks, and then another part for two weeks. And then you keep going back and forth and like just moving them around because that constant movement is gonna prevent the overgrazing. The second issue that you're gonna have to contend with is manure because geese make a lot of poop. Since most of their diet is just grass, the geese actually need to eat a lot of grass in order to get the nutrition that they need. Because they're eating so much grass and fiber, it means that they're leaving goose turds absolutely everywhere. Isn't that right, Abby Dog? 
And now if you're constantly rotating your animals on like that two week cycle and you're allowing for about, I don't know, four to six weeks of rest for the ground, you don't have to do anything with that goose manure because it breaks down really quickly and it ends up fertilizing your pasture. So geese are in fact soil builders, but if you are not rotating them, you're gonna probably have to go in there and clean it up. And so that's really the second major consideration to keep in mind. And then the third consideration you really need to keep in mind is the noise. Because yes, I do love the geese, but holy heck, the geese are loud. And so particularly if you're like, you're in a closely formed suburban neighborhood, you might really need to think about what kind of neighbor are you trying to be just to ensure that you're not gonna annoy the heck out of the local folks. Like for example, I keep my geese in this area that's pretty far back from most of my neighbors as a way to manage the noise. But even with that buffer zone, I am insanely thankful that I have very understanding and supportive neighbors who really embrace the goose operation. They're all flocking and moving, you can see it. So this is my younger batch of geese. Most of these birds will be butchered in the next week or so. Part of our farm's business is that we sell goose meat. And so this is the time of year where they're getting ready for their last fattening and ready for slaughter. So while my meat geese get most of their diet from the pasture this time of year, the last two weeks before they go in for processing, I usually give them some extra cracked corn as a way to fatten them up a little bit. And so when you hear me talk about my geese getting 90% of their diet, these last two weeks or three weeks are usually that extra 10%, where they're getting extra feed as well like cracked corn. Like if I was trying to be perfectly sustainable, they probably wouldn't get anything other than the grass all the way up to slaughter. But I have found that to get that good full weight mature goose, you have to add that extra cracked corn and so I really I'm just trying to do my best to balance the sustainability of it all with the economics of trying to run a business. Now as to the question of how many geese per acre can you have, what I would say is this, if you have mature adult geese, I would say I'd probably limit it to about 10 per acre. I think more than that just means that you have more space needs. And so if you were to go like 20 for two acres or 30 for three acres, I think you're roughly in the right ballpark. I've never done like a scientific study on this. So this has just been based on my personal experience, but that one acre, seems to give enough time so that you can keep rotating it through. Like a few years back when I was actually keeping my geese penned up and I was rotationally grazing them and moving fencing on a weekly basis. When I was doing it that way, I had about 30 geese per um, half acre, but they were only there for about, I don't know, six days, five days before I'd move them again. And so, you know, that was overgrazing, but it was intentional overgrazing because then they wouldn't show up in that same spot again for like a month or two. And so it had plenty of rest. And so you could push it a little bit, but if you want to comfortably and sustainably on an ongoing basis, keep those geese, I would say that the 10 geese per acre rule is a decent one to follow. And don't forget to give your geese plenty of fresh water, enough that they can dunk their heads in. They don't need to be able to go swimming, but they definitely need water where they can dip their whole head in. Looks like we just had some fall mating activity. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, Belinda. As you can tell, the heifer girls are itching for some fresh grass, so let's give it to them. Come on, girls. Fresh grass, come on. Those pasture moves always take like no time at all. <laughs> you know, these two have done a really nice job over the course of this summer. They've grown a lot. I mean, you look at the side by side of where they were versus where they are, kind of impressive. They're probably about seven or 800 pounds right now. I wanna get them up to about a thousand before I start breeding them. So I think probably by Father's Day next year, they'll be exactly where they need to be. And for those of you guys wondering, yeah, Father's Day is usually typically when I turn the bull loose with the girls. And notice how I say typically when I've only done it once so far. But yes, Father's Day will probably be when Macho Man gets to meet these ladies finally face to face. And Abby Dog, you're gonna have to be very careful when that happens. So as regular viewers of our YouTube channel may be aware, I've been having a really tough time the last couple of weeks. I've been feeling sad, I've been feeling depressed, and I've honestly just been really struggling overall. But for me, when I get into situations like this, I find that I am very grateful that I have a therapist that I can talk to and really share my emotions with, get an outside perspective, and really get me the help that I might need for coping with a situation which has me feeling really down and really blue. If you're finding yourself in a similar situation, I would like to strongly encourage you to look into finding some mental health help yourself. And one really great place. Jenny! <laughs> 
<laughs> and one really great place to start is with today's video sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, animals can break your heart and they can also lift it. They are absolutely incredible. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And that's really important because for a guy like me who lives out in the middle of nowhere, finding a therapist can be very difficult. And so yes, as a guy who does live in the middle of nowhere, I have personally used BetterHelp to get connected with a therapist. BetterHelp's platform makes finding a therapist very easy and accessible and you can just go in online, answer a few simple questions in their questionnaire, and you will get connected to a mental health professional who can help you with whatever you need, whether you're dealing with depression, trying to figure out how your wacky ADHD brain works, or just looking for a third party perspective that you can talk to about the challenges you might be facing in your life. BetterHelp can help you find those therapy resources. If you want to get connected to BetterHelp, there's a link in the description of this video that you can check out, or you can just go to betterhelp.com slash goldshaw farm, and that's where you're going to find the help that you need. And while clicking this link helps support our farm, it also helps get you 10% off your first month using BetterHelp. So if you are struggling, definitely check out BetterHelp. They might be able to get you the help that you need. And thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting our farm. Okay, let's feed our hungry barn cats. There you go, Polly. Dig in, buddy. Jenny, you caused so much chaos, but I love you still. While I feel like Abby is definitely chaotic good, I feel like Ginny is like chaotic neutral, if that makes any sense. And if you're a Dungeons and Dragons player. So the battery on my bike is about dead, so I gotta replace it. I find that I get about a week's charge before I have to either recharge or swap out the batteries on these bikes. All right, Abby, ready to go to the top of the hill? Let's go. Look at those fat and sassy birds just hanging out. Hey, Ariel. How's it going, girl? That's my favorite cow. Huh? Good to see you. Oh, you're gonna munch on my fingers? Forgot to bring my brush up. Who else do we have in this crew to moo this morning? Hello, Joey Ramon. Much like your sisters down below, you are also getting quite large. Good to see you, pal. And look at those horns, they're getting bigger and bigger. And how's our boss cow, Audrey, doing? Yeah, you see me and you say, okay, we better be moving to some fresh grass right about now, huh? And look at little Macho Man. You're getting so big, buddy. You're getting so big. So this is our bull, Macho Man Randy Savage. He's been putting in the work. I haven't seen any of my cows go into heat in the last, I don't know, month and a half. And so that's got me thinking that these girls are already bred. When it comes time to move them down to the lower pasture, I'll have my date set with my vet where the vet will come in and check them out and make sure everybody's looking pregnant and give me estimated delivery dates and all that good stuff. But I'm definitely hoping for four or five of these gals to be bred so that we have lots of babies next year. That is the plan. Looks like they've grazed this area down and they're ready to move over to this next paddock. Hey there, Anna Green Gables. How are you doing? Good. Good to hear. Abby, I just saw you dropping some bombs in here to join with the cattles. Yes, the cattles have dropped some serious bombs. And then yes, you can see the difference between an Abby bomb and a cattle bomb. So to make the daily fencing divides, I usually get a handful of these step-in posts and I grab one of these reels of fencing wire. And then I pick out a spot where it seems like it would be the appropriate place to run the fence. Then you'll see me drop these little fence posts every, I don't know, 20, 25 feet. And then I'll wrap this one end of the fence wire around the fence post. And I just run the wire right through these fence posts. And I just keep sneaking this through all the way. Uh-oh, I hope I have enough fencing wire to reach the end. Oh, I am don't. <laughs> it's like a, I don't know, three foot gap between my reel and the post. Luckily, I can always cheat. Just lift up the post just a little bit, bring it a little bit closer, and boom, there we go. So now this will keep all the cattle in place for the day. When I take down this reel, they're gonna come rushing right in. Hey, Kels! Come on, cows, fresh grass, fresh grass, come on. Hey, cows. Come on, cows, fresh grass, fresh grass, come on. See, as soon as I start my yelling, they start there wandering. Now I just have to unhook this guy without getting myself shocked. I usually try to turn the fence off before I come in, but I forgot to this morning and maybe being a wee bit lazy and not doing it, but there you go. So this wire right here is electrified and would knock me on my butt. But as soon as it's disconnected, I can just carry it and move it around. Now I reel this up and then they go. The boss cow always leads the way. Come on team, let's go. Get that grass. And then once everybody's in, I close it up so that they're constantly grazing fresh grass. They're always very happy to be on this fresh grass. You getting your grass there, macho man?
Baby Beatrix, you're on the wrong side of the line. So yeah, Baby B can still go wherever she wants. I'm using a gentle parenting approach with her. I'm not exactly sure if it's working or not. You can see her mom right here. This is Amanda Hug and Kiss. She came to us last year, like late last fall, early winter, and she was very, very skittish. But nowadays, she's gotten so much more chill with me. I mean, she's probably not gonna lick my hand right now because she's face down in grass, but she's made some significant improvements. Yes, you have, Amanda. Yes, you have. I have high hopes for you in the future and other offspring. Siblings of Baby B, if you will. The genetics of the cattle and kind of like watching the progress that they make and like having generations of cattle here on my farm is maybe one of the more exciting things to me about the future of this farm. So you'll notice right here, I actually cheated a little bit with my fencing reel because I've now extended it out. That way I don't have to move my water trough this morning. I try to move the water trough every like three or four days. And oftentimes that involves cheating a little bit with the fence lines. Abby, don't tell me that you're rolling around in cow poop. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what you're doing. Oh, you're such a good dog, even though you're gross. <laughs> hey, would you guys look at that? Folks were wondering, Baby B can now drink from the water trough. And so I don't have to set out the water trough for her anymore. Plus she's still getting most of her beverage from her mom in the form of milk. You know, when the hard winter comes and like, I have to move the cattle down to the barn. I really am gonna miss mornings like this. This is kind of my favorite part of farm life is being up here moving the cattle, being outdoors, enjoying the weather. Even though the weather's kind of weird today, it's like 50 degrees and really windy. And it's almost about nine o'clock as I'm recording this right now, and I'm still wearing my hooded sweatshirt, which definitely is a sign that the fall is coming. A lot of the trees are starting to make their turn. I'm gonna guess only maybe a couple more weeks of having the cattle up here before they gotta go down. Is that gonna make you sad, Abby? Are you gonna be sad that we don't get to have our daily little trips up here to visit the cattle? I know it'll make me sad. Good morning, chickens. How's everybody doing? Did you guys eat all your food already? Is that why you're standing around looking at me like I owe you something? Yep, they ate all their food. You know, probably in the next two weeks or so, I'll move these gals down below as well. Given that the temperatures are getting much cooler, I don't have too much need for fly control these days. These chickens will move soon down below. And I'll also start that process of integrating them in with the uh, younger chickens. And so, you know, basically making those one flock by the time the winter sets in is, is one of my goals. Any eggs? Two eggs so far this morning, that's good. All right, it's time to do a dog exchange. Abby dog, you go in. Toby dog, you come out. Good job. This is always Toby's favorite time of day. So usually after I finish my cow chores and give Abby a little closeness time, I like to give Toby dog his brushing and becomes my chance to bond with him. Toby doesn't like to wander, or at least he doesn't do as good job wandering as Abby. He gets his connection differently, which I think for folks thinking about raising animals, it's an important point. Like you don't treat every single animal the same. You gotta recognize that they have their nuances and differences, and it's your job as the caretaker to figure out what those nuances are and give them what they need and what they want. What Mr. Toby Dog wants is lots of brushing. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that right, pal? Yeah, I love you too. Hey, Toby. Oh, he's gotta pee on one fence post before he goes inside, watch. He's just trying to find a spot. He's like, uh, yeah, right here. Spritz, spritz, spritz. Okay, come on. Inside we go. Let's go, kid. Good boy. Whoa, back off. Don't get so aggressive. I got some treats for you. To treat yourself. Old expired produce. Got some tomatoes that are rotting on the vine, so I gave them those. We had an expired watermelon from a neighbor. Let's see, somebody gonna crush it? Oh, looks like Big Red takes the first bite. Won't be long before that whole thing is gone. Back off, girls, back off. I don't have brewer's grains today, so you're just getting regular feed and some cracked corn. Yeah, they get a little aggressive these days, so it's becoming harrowing trying to feed them. There you go. Don't worry, I'll soak that in water in just a second. Yeah, they are big girls, and they're pushy. <laughs> I mean, they're fun, but they're, they're pushy. Looks like my plums, I don't know what's going on. They don't seem like they're developing. These plums seem like they're doing a little bit better. Definitely gonna have to come in here and prune a lot. Look more like cherries than plums. I mean, if I look at the meat, it's a plum, but man, they're not gonna be big plums, that's for darn sure. Those guys eat them. For folks who wonder how I water my pigs, so I just basically have a hose that I run from the barn out to their water tub, and I fill this thing up. I don't know, I'm finding I have to do it every about three days or so. Just get it all the way to the top. I find that having more water in it also keeps them from knocking it over. I actually forgot to do it on day three 
the other day and they kicked it all the way down into the woods and so gotta be a little bit careful with that. I would not put it past the pigs to try to knock over a water thing to mess with the fence as a way to escape. They can be kind of crafty like that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this update to the farm. If you're really curious about geese and want to see more about how I've done like a rotational goose system in the past, you should flash back to this video over here. I think you're going to enjoy it and probably learn something from it. So thanks for watching everybody. Would you two calm down? Just be cool. Just be cool.